Good morning everyone from Jeff's Little Engine Service. So what we have here is a very common edger and a very common small engine. Uh, it's a Tecumseh engine, three and a half horsepower. They made a million of them at least, probably a bazillion of them. And typical problem, been sitting for way too long and now it won't start. So let's take a look here. So this particular model, if I can show you here, it has a diaphragm style carburetor. And these carburetors are notorious for failing. You, you know, you leave it sit for a year in your garage, uh, you come out in the springtime, try to get it operating, and it won't start. The problem the problem is in the carburetor. This is the air filter here and you can just twist them off. They do make a rebuild kit for these carburetors, but in my experience it's not worth it. Um, they just keep having problems. I, I've always had problems working on those. So When I looked into it, I realized that they don't even sell this as a replacement anymore. They sell you a... they want... They want they want to sell you a float style carburetor to replace it. The original factory one was almost $80 and that's a little too much money to put into this machine for me because that's about all it's worth. But I was able to find an aftermarket carburetor. If you watch my videos you know I'm not a big fan of aftermarket carburetors. But uh, considering the factory one was so expensive, I went ahead and gave these guys a try. Looks like they give you a gasket here too. But here you are. Looks like a fairly decent carburetor, so I'm hoping to have good luck with this. We'll find out. I'm always leery of aftermarket equipment. Uh, a lot of times it's so cheaply built. But this one looks like it's a little more quality than I've seen before. So let's see how it works. Now's a good time to take the fuel line off. I'll probably end up replacing it because it's pretty hard and brittle. These pliers are real nifty. I use them a lot every day. So it looks like we need a 7 16 for this nut and maybe a 3 8 to hold it on the back side. It looks like it's a 7 16 on the nut and a 7 16 to hold it behind too. Let's go ahead and take off the gas tank. It's real easy, just these four bolts here. My workbench is full of other projects right now, that's why I'm not working on my workbench. I know I say that every time I make a video, don't I guys? But it's true. So I'll want to make sure and clean out this gas tank and let it sit in the sun, dry out completely. It's a 7 16 let's just see if I can break it loose here. Maybe, nope. Okay, so we got a 7 16 a couple of 7 16 wrenches here. Let's see if I can break this loose. It's on there pretty tight. They don't give you much room, that's for sure. All right, looks 
much like that'll work. There we go. Dang. Get to the other side here. Shut up, I'm filming. All right, let's see here. Oh boy. Yeah, these carburetors were a pain in the butt. They were hard to tune. And I rebuilt one one time and it just kept leaking wouldn't stop leaking. I couldn't get the diaphragm to seal. So they're just crap. Then it's Tecumseh, so what do you expect? Should have sprayed some lubricant on here. It would have made it a little easier, I think. It's one step. Diff nut. There we go. So, if you watch my videos, you may have heard those bells before. That's my town uh, town bells. They ring at noon. Kind of cool. So to break this carburetor loose, we're just going to want to give it a little wrap, maybe with a hammer. Oh, I just found a hammer. There we go. We're going to have to clean off this gasket surface, and we're going to want to make note where this linkage, which hole the linkage was in, so we don't forget. I don't know. With the new carburetor, we might go into a different hole. I'm not sure. All right, to the junk pile. Clean this off. Make sure to get that piece out from inside there before I put the carburetor back on. And you'll want to get rid of all the gasket Try not to scratch it too much. All right, there we go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put this linkage back in the, the hole that it came out of on the other carburetor. Looks like that's okay. Let's see here. Yeah, that seems to work. Have our new gasket here. these bolts back out. Hey Jacob, just doing a little film in here. All right, stop and say hi to a buddy there for a little bit. But we're back at it. 
So this carburetor has two adjustments. The one on the bottom is your high speed adjustment. When the engine's running at a high RPM, that RPM, that's the one you'll adjust. There's also one on this side, that little screw there. And that's what they call your idle mixture or your slow speed mixture adjustment screw. So we'll dial these in. I think this is meant to bend back into shape once you get it installed. All right. So let's tighten these up. And I'll go back and forth, tighten them up each side a little bit at a time, just to make sure nothing gets bound up or anything. Takes a little while, but you'll get it. And you'll want to tighten these pretty tight and make sure and cinch that gasket up so you don't want any air leaks. If you make it too tight, you can break off the little tabs on the carburetor, so be careful not to do that. Don't ask me how I know that that will happen, but I know. All right. Good and tight. Okay. Let's get... And what are you doing over there? Anyways, let's go ahead and put this gas tank on. And look what we have here now. All the numb nuts are here. Everyone's a critic. So I've decided I'm going to put an inline fuel filter in here. And uh, these gas tanks, the only fuel, fuel filter they have is just a little screen inside the tank. Doesn't work real good. So I'm going to uh, put this in line. I think I'll cut about that much. And put it on here. Then I'll run this up here. Yep. And we'll have to make a loop. Just like that. It's about the only way you can get it to fit. They just don't give you much room. So you'll see, I just, oh, see, that's not going to work. There's a crease right there. So, I'm going to have to figure something out here. I'm going to shorten this up a little bit. Put him on like that. See if we can make a loop here without making any creases in the fuel line because that'll stop fuel flow, of course. All right, so there's no kink in the fuel line, so I think we're good. Kind of bulky, but it's a good thing to have on there, anyways. And as you can see, the air filter mounting area is different, so this one's not going to work. But I'll show you what we do to fix that. So here's the old air filter. You'll want to start taking this apart, 
and this cage twists off this base all right so basically you just grip it real good and twist and you can discard this piece and you'll keep this piece and this will work on the new mount that we're going to put up to there okay let's see if we can find that uh, air filter mount out here in the junkyard take a little stroll my junkyards pretty cleaned out right now a couple times a year I call the scrap guys and they come and haul away a bunch of mowers okay so I see some Tecumseh engines here that one's missing the piece I'm looking for. This one has a different style, so I could actually put this style of air filter on there if I wanted to. Uh, we might end up doing that. That one's a little more oval. This is the one I'm going to use if I can find the bracket or the mounting flange. Uh, I couldn't find exactly what I was looking for there, so... I have one more place to look over in this little scrap pile. Looking for a Tecumseh engine. I think that was one there, but it doesn't have the part I'm looking for. Nope, I don't see it. But I do see one of these. And this is that other mount I was telling you about that we can use. Just need to get another bolt. Okay, so here's our setup. This air filter is nasty, so we'll get rid of that. And I'm going to go ahead and clean this stuff up with soap and water. Just make sure you have your gasket. And mount that baby up. Yeah, so most Tecumsehs either have that uh, round air filter setup or this air filter setup. Looks like they're interchangeable. All right. All right, time for a new spark plug and some gas. So I don't have the air filter in stock. Part number is 36905. I'll order one. It's okay to fire it up without it. So we're just kind of testing things out here to see if this machine will even run. It's been sitting for many, many years. And I'll want to make sure to check the oil level in it too, just to make sure it has oil. I have a Champion spark plug here. I only use NGK or Champion spark plugs. The number is, if you can see that, RJ19LM. I need to adjust that slow speed. You want to get the engine running as slow as possible to adjust low speed, which is this screw here, that's about where it's good.
So it's running right now, but I'm going to keep a close eye on this carburetor, and uh, I'll report back if it fails. Oh, look at it. It is failing. It's leaking. What a piece of garbage. Unfortunately, this piece of crap carburetor is uh, leaking. I can see that it's overflowing, uh, actually flooding into the throat of the carburetor, which tells me that it's not the O-ring seal. It's uh, just the fact that that float needle valve is not seating to stop the fuel flow, so I guess we're going to have to open this carburetor up and see if we can do something about that. What a piece of crap. Now let that be a lesson to you on aftermarket carburetors. They're crap!